so the lots to talk about. Um, as mentioned, it's hard to focus preparing to interview. Sarah Jessica Parker is like, you, have, you watch a lot of movies, you <laughs> watch a beautiful TV shows with iconic characters. Like I said, you drink wine, you buy shoes, you read, <laughs> you read a New York Times best-selling books, and there's a lot of other things. Oh, and you contemplate Neil Simon and some of the most <laughs> epic plays um, in history. So all those things, it's extremely likely that I'm gonna not stay on point. <laughs> so we're gonna start with Invivo, um, this delicious new wine. We're gonna share it with all of you. Um, yeah. how, did you how did you decide that that project was right for you, for your brand, for your person? I don't think I've ever um, considered a, a brand. I mean, I, right. I don't, nor do I think of myself as having one or um, heading toward one or shaping one. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I think primarily I've been um, somebody who has been enormously curious about things in the world and I've had the good fortune um, to be asked to participate and um, I've had the opportunity to say yes and I will confess that I had not pondered and fantasized about um, producing a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> um, and in fact, I wasn't even a Sauvignon Blanc drinker. I felt that it was a, that was a complicated wine and I was um, very comfortable you? with the Chardonnay. I felt like I knew where I stood and I, um, <laughs> and I felt like a Sauvignon Blanc people had very strong opinions mm. about and for. Mm -hmm. um, but I met these two gentlemen and they were willing to teach me, which mm -hmm. was really important to me. They were willing to share all of their information and a year spent in this particular somewhat foreign industry. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about what we hoped to achieve and how we wanted to do it and who, how it would be available for lots and lots mm -hmm. of people and uh, how it wouldn't feel rarefied and um, forbidding. Mm -hmm. And we got to blend and create a somewhat um, unusual, surprising, mm -hmm. um, loyal, yet rogue Sauvignon Blanc. Wow, that's <laughs> like quite And a, I'm mad yeah. for it. I've just, I, 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 and I, and I promise, I assure you, I was terrified that I wouldn't be able to say that when the that's bottle, tough. when the first bottle right. arrived, but it is really quite delectable and right. I have turned my back on Chardonnay. Yes, it's over, um, breaking yes. up. Well, that's very exciting. We all can't wait to have it um, on our well palettes it. as well. Yeah. And you have a very strong, <laughs> you're like, what are you going to say? Sense of, of smell. You nailed my, my perfume the minute I walked in the room. Um, you have created your own. Did, was there any connection between um, the olfactory you developed in perfumes and that which you probably brought to the wine party? Yes, um, I think it's probably not surprising to, to um, you know, to learn that they're not unrelated, right? You, you, uh, the wine has a bouquet. It's has it has fragrance to mm -hmm. it. You respond to it. In fact, mm -hmm. in the in the blending in May, it was very much the first impression was, you know, what we were smelling, right. and um, and that's also completely subjective. Right. What, you know, right. I find appealing and seductive. You might be. No, if you um, tell me it's good, I'm totally going to believe it. I'm going to be like, um, it's good. But yeah, the two are, there is hand in glove, I think. And, um, and so that made it more enjoyable because I, I love smell. Um, I have a child that is the same way. You know, I love, I think it's one of the reasons I love traveling to places, oh. especially that feel that are very foreign, is, you know, what we smell when we travel to places unfamiliar. It tells us so much, you know about villages and people mm -hmm. and cultures and tribes and even religions often. Wow. Um, so I love smell. So yes, awesome. and it played a, an integral role in the, in the blending process. It's nice to find one of your kids when they have something yeah, in I'm common. Like, oh, man. You're like, yes, you've got that that's thing. me. <laughs> For <laughs> my better kids or worse. Look exactly like my husband, and I'm like just a vessel that you know caused them to Earth. arrive here. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> just that. Uh, just that. So um, okay, it's like act. These are all different, entirely different things you've done. So um, I'm going to stick on entrepreneurialism because many of the women in our audience and in our community are just that, they are entrepreneurs, and they are taking that curiosity that you um, engender and applying it to content they produce um, and really, you know, going out there and taking that risk of saying, I'm not, 
I'm not just doodling, I'm an artist. I'm not just, you know, writing quips, I'm a writer. I'm not, you know, I, I, I have a real business point of view whether I have an MBA or not. Um, how did you give yourself permission to play in business? And like, how do you go from saying, I'm really good at this thing that I've learned and I could be really good at business. I might not have experience yet. I have to ask people for favors. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make this into a question, but like, how do you do that so that we can all think about those solutions as we come up against the same challenges? Right. I, um, I think a lot of it is being inspired by other people's stories that you learn of and read about other women who are starting businesses. And um, I think for, for me, what I did is that I always assumed because I had very conventional, old-fashioned ideas about being a business person and your experience as a student. Mm -hmm. That if I had been, you know, a super achiever academic, academically, or if I had thrived, right. that that would somehow suggest that I would be a be ripe for business, right? So when I, when I started working in business, it occurred to me that I was loving the conversations and that I was, if I was careful and smart enough to listen and learn to people who were good at it, I would, like many of you in the room and anybody in the room, you would absorb it because you had interest. You needed to learn, you wanted to learn. And so what I have, so I was stunned by the revelation that you don't have to have been a good math student, right, you know, right. or even done well on math in your PSATs or SATs to be a successful person. And by the way, we can also talk about what success means because yes. that too is Let's a word that. that I struggle with. Yes. I will say this, I think the thing that, um, two things, I've asked a lot of questions. I've tried to be near people who I admire, who I think are successful, both as professionals but as people, meaning they're good, they're honorable, they treat their employees and colleagues well. They like to see people grow in companies. Mm -hmm. um, they want to share information. Those are the kind of people I want to be around, and that's the kind of person I hope to be as mm -hmm. an employer. Mm -hmm. um, and on occasion as a leader, that's the, the person I try to be because of the people I got to be around who I felt were so good at what they mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. in large part because of the people they were. Second thing I will say is that I know that I had opportunities that existed that aren't always available because I have already had, I was a somewhat public person and so it was easier for me to pick up a phone and call somebody blind, meaning without proper introduction mm -hmm. and just be brave and find a phone number and, and ask for help or information. And so I, I know that makes it easier and mm -hmm. that introduction is less terrifying. But I will say, I think people really want to be helpful mm -hmm. to young businesses. Mm -hmm. I think people want exciting new ideas and you should summon courage you think you don't mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. and, um, and a, bold, a boldness that you might not think you possess mm -hmm. and simply reach out because the worst that can happen is somebody disappoints you mm -hmm. and you move on to the next person who will surprise you and, and reach out, That's awesome. um, if yeah. that makes sense. It totally makes sense. And I think a lot of us you know, struggle with that moment of courage when you're like, I could get rejected, which maybe is particularly, I don't want to gender specify, but I think there's excellent data indicating that um, women often have trouble making the business ask and yeah. um, feeling like I'm, I, I deserve funding, I deserve the bank loan, I deserve your advocacy. And I think that that moment of courage still plagues many of us. Like, how do we ask Sarah Jessica Parker to be on our stage? And you know, how do we ask? You just ask. We just ask. You just ask. <laughs> really but nice. that's what I. Do. I mean, I dream big all the time, and I have crazy thoughts that none of you know. And and much of it is not fully realized. But I feel like I have to. I have to just. I have to ask. Yep. It's embarrassing sometimes when someone says no, and it's also their delivery. They can say no in a way that you feel much better for having asked, or they can say no in a way that is humiliating. Mm -hmm. But I didn't lose any ground by asking. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, in the shower, I have so many dreams. I have so many big thoughts, <laughs> you know, because it's just super quiet. It's just like, as a mm -hmm. 
mother, you know, yeah. there's so yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to go in there stuff. sometimes just to turn I it on. I just feel like there's, I feel like, you know, you, you, you don't lose a whole lot by, by asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. And then framing the ask, because it is, I think, a tactical question, strategic question sometimes. Um, I love being asked thing to, to be of some use because I, it makes me feel confident, like someone, you could lend right. someone some kind of value. Yes. Um, and so it's always flattering, I think, um, at least to me, if that, you know, those requests come my way. But the framing of the ask, um, this isn't a question, I'm just saying something actually, no, that's okay. um, uh, is like, what can you actually do for me, I think is, is something I'm finally learning to, to say instead of, hey, I want your help and I want to meet with you, saying, I know this person who you know. I have a great idea to, uh, you know, increase, decrease carbon output by X percent. And can you introduce me to this person? It will allow me to move my business forward or my idea. Or can I speak on your stage at Blog Her? I have a story that is one, two, three. And it makes it a lot easier to say yes or no also. Right. Because time is, you know. Yeah, so you're saying that being specific rather than sort of dodging around it right. and, and being right. polite and overly exactly. solicitous. Yes. Maybe it's sometimes best to come with the ask being very specific and clear that you exactly. actually are, it is a transaction. Exactly, it is a transaction. For. I think that's just, hopefully, a, this generation of women are going to be better <laughs> yeah. at it and not cringe even as I say it. I know, I know. our body is like... I feel like because we have empirical evidence that women haven't been received, right. you know, when we ask for financing, right. help, you know, right. help, um, counsel, yeah. mentorship, it's not always been um, received mm -hmm. in the way it should. So, right. so we're hoping yep. that we're going to um, kind of change the way we yes. approach that. Yes. And, um, you know, we're typically not even asking to borrow money necessarily. No. It's information that's as right. valuable, like information and your shared experience is, is currency that's almost worth more yeah. than, yeah. The, than the dollar sometimes. Yeah. Um, yes, so I, I think totally asking, agree. And I, and I wonder if sometimes we have trouble asking. And there are like this audience and our community is freaking great at asking and being confident and making the stepping forward, you know, gut wrenching, um, please believe in me is I think actually something I, I'm fortunate to see every day. But there is a sense sometimes of like, I don't deserve it. And that's maybe way back in your head. Um, or it's, you know, it's, it's that dread or that doubt that can be so insidious. Did you have people who, who said, no, you're really smart, like feel like you deserve, that you have the permission to play? Or how did you muster that confidence? I didn't really have anyone that said that specifically. I think maybe a couple things happened. We know when I was, what I, when I did Sex and the City, Darren Starr early on in that first meeting where he, you know, asked me to, if I would do the series, said, you know, you should be a producer. And I said, I don't know anything about, I've never produced television. And he said, then just learn, you know, be a consultant the first year, just come to all the production meetings, just learn. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, inc I mean, that's just the, the gateway yeah. to so much information. Um, so he didn't say, you know, you're smart and you have every right, right you know. Um, he was saying it maybe he an was underpinning, saying, like you could learn it. You could learn it. Mm -hmm. And so then, um, you know, I think I spent a year just watching and listening and learning, and then I became a producer on the show. And I think then working so closely as the producer with mm -hmm. Michael Patrick of the show and, and John Melfi, we just were handling producing mm -hmm. all day long, every day, for mm -hmm. years and years and years and years and years. And you just learn the business of producing, right? right? right. Which involves numbers and budgets and unions yeah. and interpersonal relationships and complicated mm -hmm. people and easy people and people that betray you and right. leave you and right at the last minute right. and oh now we need to fill that you know you're dealing with a lot of people right. and you're responsible to and for a group of people so you learn because it's exciting there's a lot at stake you're invested so that when i left the series i had had all that experience so that when i became interested in businesses outside right. of that I felt at least as if I had been in hi, in a high stake situation. Right, right. I've been dealing with you know somebody else's business, lots yeah. of money mm -hmm. and trying to be really responsible and make good choices and be prudent and be thoughtful mm -hmm. and be you know decadent when it required it and super frugal when mm -hmm. it you know when yep. it was smart too. Yep. 
So it really is just about experience, and I think right. it's the experience. That's what we're all wanting. We right, want the experience right. so that we can be better at what we do. The more information we have, the more time spent doing what we love doing, even if it's the road to right. the destination, which is like that product, we're better for it. Right. Right. When you withhold information from us, I feel like that is the, that is the thing that's, for me, the most objectionable. Right. When you try to keep information from us, from mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. I feel it's diminishing. Wow. You know, that's the hardest part yeah. for me. Yeah. And, um, but I think just time spent in the process of achieving what you want to achieve, whatever that is, and having it be uniquely your own, mm -hmm. to me are the, those are the, these are the yeah. ingredients to, to, to your own success, whatever that means for you. I think that the withholding of information, I find that very resonant because I've seen the, the kind of creative be put in the corner. Yeah. And like, don't you worry about They're the financials. Children. Yeah. You know, you just make pretty things. And yeah. that's extremely disempowering. It also ends up with you don't understand how you're performing, truly. You don't understand if you're... And the other thing, too, and I was on the phone with a, a young woman that I've known. She was a babysitter, and now she's a big fancy pants. She's writing and producing <laughs> and doing all sorts of things. Well, she's just learning. She's just producing for the first time, but she has a big, this big opportunity sitting in her lap. And we were just on the phone. She said, just can I just talk to you for a little bit? And and I said, listen, make sure you have information all the time. You know, that's yeah. the key to your, like, the more you have, the more you know, the more you feel that you are equipped to be part of the conversation, right. Right. the more important you are in the room. Yeah. And the other thing is, don't have side conversations. Don't okay. talk about something without the group. That's interesting. Don't peel people off and say, just between you and me, this person and that person. And it sets up all this stuff that people love to project onto a woman. Ooh, interesting. Stay okay. in a group. And every time someone pulls you up, no, 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 no. If, I feel like we're all going to be better if we right. share this right. information, right. even if it's uncomfortable and challenging and painful. Yep. No, no, no. Right. So that you are always the person that is keeping a group of people working together. I love that. I love that. I mean, that's great advice for me and for everybody. Yeah, yeah, let's clap. <laughs> um, that's very exciting advice. I love that. I love that. I love the data centricity, know your numbers, and the transparency of like the side hustle conversations can be time waste. They can be onerous, painful, divisive. They, also, they set up, yeah, they're divisive. They set up um, sort of internecine battles that, that aren't real. Mm -hmm. um, and people lose trust in each other and this paranoia can creep in. And yeah, it's bad, it's bad, terrible stuff. Somebody else's problem. I am sure we're meant to talk about the wine now. Uh, oh, really? It's like per, it's, it is pervading uh -oh. the room. Can you it's, smell it? Yeah. Oh my smell God, it. I can Just smell it. Get in there, it. get in there, guys, with your... Oh, thank uh, you. Why, thank you. Don't um, we get to not hear from our... Uh, we're going to talk to our audience. We got a whole solid six minutes Woo! here, ladies. Whole solid six minutes, thirty-six um, seconds. Yeah. So, I have like a lot more I'd like to ask you at some other date. Should we, <laughs> we should I, do. I, 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 I would like to toast all of you Aww. and say that Woo! I'm extremely excited. Can you guys take big pictures of that? Extremely excited about everything you are doing and working on and dreaming about and working toward and ask each other for help. Be good to each other. Be respectful of each other. Disagree with whomever your colleagues are. I don't mean in this room, but um, <laughs> and not with me. <laughs> but I'm excited about but your future and and, and what you want to do and who you want to be. And um, we are reliant upon your ideas. So thank you very very Woo! much. And I think we have I think we have a video we'd like to show that oh, will give you. Oh, don't show that. Let's ask questions. Okay, instead. sorry. We're gonna ask questions. Let's instead, talk. Because let's this is talk. Boss, see that was a disagreement. Isn't that better. We worked you through that. I do. I do. You brought Indeed, me over. Indeed, we mine. It's <laughs> about how we blended the wines. It's, we can talk about it later. Okay, we are gonna. <laughs> but questions. I feel like, yeah, I feel you like guys, there's a lot. Okay, someone's roving mic. Okay yeah, that we're doing dude, that? totally. It's okay. perfect. Um, Hi. There we go. There's a young woman with a pink blazer right there. Yes. yes. Does it work? Yes. Uh oh. Uh, we got right behind you. You're next. It's not a question, Mrs. Parker. I want to thank you for a Kurdish politician. For what? I couldn't hear I, didn't hear I want to thank you for a Kurdish politician who is in jail in Turkey and you chose to publish his book in English. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, you did? Oh my yeah. God, I didn't hear it. That's amazing. It's a book called Dawn by a, a writer named Selah Heaton Dermatash. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name correctly. 
but he is the uh, wow. he is the leader of the Kurdish opposition party in Turkey, and he has been in prison since 2016. Um, he would say he's a political prisoner. Um, others who disagree with him politically might call him something else, but his stories are extraordinary, and they're primarily about women, mostly about refugees, um, Syrian refugees. The book is incredibly funny, surprisingly. It is amusing, it's heart-rending, and it's extraordinary. And he published it in Turkey. It sold 200,000 copies. Wow. He wrote it from prison. Wow. It sold 200,000 copies in two weeks, and we got to publish it this spring. So that's exciting. Thank you for so that's, it. Yeah. And that's Hogarth, that's, SJP. Yeah, that's yeah. SJP for Hogarth. Which is an amazing, I mean, we don't, again, you can't get to all of the ex amazing efforts and initiatives, but uh, bringing really great stories into the mainstream narrative. And young thank lady, you for hitting that. There's a young lady who just stood up in the, yes, in the blue. bright blue. Yes. What's up, Blue? Yourself? Oh. Do you need a mic? Nope. It's coming at oh. you. Jen Den. You got two. You got two? Got two mics. <laughs> That's a really good question. Stay so balanced, and do you feel a lot of pressure around you have to be a mom, or you have to be this way or that way? How do you stay so just in between? You seem so well-rounded. Um, I always answered this very generous, nice question by saying, how do women in this country who are working two and three jobs with little or no child care, little or no community support, little or no support from um, our government, no pre-K, um, no fair wages, no working wages, how are they doing it? Not how I'm on it, how are they doing it? There we go. Here, I have someone in the back. Grab a and mic. So oh, I'm sorry, dude. I don't know who I'm answering. <laughs> go, go, everybody, go. Um, you too. So I uh, do a, lot, a series called Hustle Like a Mom, which is about mom entrepreneurs that are redefining what it means to be a working mom. And I actually have recently um, been in contact with a lot of grandmapreneurs. And so my question is, not that anybody's a grandma, but what are your thoughts? Because I feel like you keep reinventing yourself and expanding your, I know you don't like the word brand, but expanding your business horizons. What are your thoughts and expert um, tips for second acts? Mm. Um, I, I, I think people should be doing the things that are interesting to them when, when they can. I mean, none of it's, you, it's not easy. It's not easy to leave the job that you have to do in order to do the thing you want to do. Mm. Um, and that's the truth for most Americans, and especially most American women, is that they're not choosing their work. What do I want to do? What's my dream? Mm. They're actually living in a, the reality is, uh, this is what I have to do. And this is what I hope to do. So I hope that we do better by those women, that we make things in their lives better so that they can have those, they can dream. Mm -hmm. um, once again, back, to the, the answer is back, you know, for a second act, we gotta give women work, we gotta give women wages, we have to have affordable health care. Yeah, like we have to make things possible so that women can fulfill their potential and have second and third and fourth and fifth acts. Do you want to choose? Do you want to choose? The next? Do you want to choose the next? One? Oh, um, we have time for what? Who do I choose? Don't, oh, do we choose? Oh, um, hey. there, there's this young we woman here, young here. woman here, and woman there. Yes, those three. We have time. So okay. fast, your head's so gonna fast. spin. No, my, my Everybody, says, then you, okay. and then there, and then you. Hi. Hi. When you have a creative block, how do you get past that? A uh, creative block, getting past it. Um, uh, take a walk, listen to a podcast, turn on some classical music, uh, shake it off, and ask yourself, is the thought that you're wanting yours or somebody else's? And then drink in vivo wine, yay. Yeah, relax <laughs> with a little in vivo. Yes. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Uh, my name is Stephanie, I'm from Brazil, and uh, it's really nice being here today. Uh, and I would like to know if you have an idea to get the wine to other countries and you expect mm. to it's, go there? It is global. It's in the UK and Europe. It's already and, global? Pardon me? It's already global? Already? Yes, I think if you go to the website in uh, invivoxsjp.com, yeah. I think all the territories are listed there. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muito, muito obrigada. The young lady here? Yep, yourself, that's right. You're standing up. Yep. <laughs> She's looking behind herself. Hi, I started a venture capital firm that only invests in female founders who are using tech for impact for above market Woo! returns. Uh, and I started it because there was a lot of people who said there wasn't enough deal flow and there wasn't enough female founders, and I found that there actually are. There's more than we can support. How do we get more capital to people who know how to manage the capital and help these small businesses grow? 
um, there still isn't a lot of awareness about female-focused funds, and there's still not a lot of capital going to female fund managers. I feel I'm not equipped to answer that <laughs> question. I don't know. I mean, it's um, it's I, it confounds me as it does you. You'd be you'd be more. I feel like you're more informed than I am. Why why does that exist? I just think it's good old-fashioned time. You know, uh, we have to just keep encouraging people to invest in, in women, and the more so that do it, and the, the more success mm -hmm. you all have, um, the more they will realize that a success is not, you know, the exclusion of, uh, of, of other, uh, other people, the other gender, mm -hmm. or one of the other genders. <laughs> no, um, one of the other uh, uh, One of a gender. By oh, gender. gender. Yeah, By well, gender. it's not the exclusive uh, uh, right of men, mm -hmm. is my point. That's a really muddled answer. Do you, is that clear? I think, I think celebrities talking about, I mean, we, we can say it out loud, that women with platforms who talk about business success, their own and that of others, has been extremely effective. So like have the wonk and the, like, the wonky people who know shit, and then find them and put them on your stages. I think that's. But I think what you're doing is so incredible. And I think the more that you're out in the world talking about why you believe in yeah. it, why you're not afraid of it, the more people will be excited about it because a business is a business. People want to be successful. Women entrepreneurs are successful. So, you know, yep. join up, be smart, be on the right side of history. Yep. Make it about that, not about do the right thing. Yay. Uh oh. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, is that it? Yes, that's it. I am oh so my gosh. sorry, you guys. I'm not going to be popular. That was a whirlwind. I'm going to take, uh, let's get it up. Let's stand thank you, up. Guys. Or, thank you, thank you, thank you.